Hello and welcome to this presentation on ANSYS Workbench Mechanical in which we're going to look at how to insert a pressure that varies in X, Y, or Z when it's a tangential pressure. I'm going to review a model in which pressure is applied that's tangential to a face and that is ramped up. Now the Workbench interface doesn't provide a means of ramping up a tangential pressure as you move through space. Let's go look at a pressure put on a face right here. Pressure on the back face, it's tangential. I can align it according to my own coordinate system, which I've done here. I can put in a load, and I can ramp it up over time. And if I go here, the tabular inputs are only for time. They don't have one for ramping up that tangential load as a function of a spatial distance. If I was to change that pressure to be normal, then I have the opportunity to make that normal pressure be tabular, and there I can choose an independent variable that is x, y, or z. And if I do such a thing, I can choose the coordinate system as well. So it's all very well for a pressure normal to a face, and you can see that the pressure that's normal will build up and you even get to see a contour representation of it. But it's not available if I switch from normal over to components or vector. I can only build them up as a function of time. Let's delete this entry. I've used a workaround with some APDL commands in order to create a pressure that's tangential to the surface and builds up with distance in space. Here's what I did to get there. First, I defined my own coordinate system, placing its origin where I wanted and aligning it in a direction of interest. And what I'm going to do is build up the pressure that's tangential as a function of how far I travel along x in this coordinate system. I move down. I've put in a fixed boundary condition here to make the model simple. Now I'm going to use a small trick. I'm putting a force in. It's just a dummy force putting that force in by components, and I'm choosing my coordinate system, the one right here, and I'm putting in a force, the amount doesn't matter, I put a small number in, in the x direction. You can see the arrow. So this force will be spread out smoothly. Internally, the software will use surface effect elements to do this, and I'm going to take advantage of the surface effect elements to put in my tangential pressure and to make it a function of where I am in space. Let's go look at the APDL commands. I start by setting up a table array, and I'm using the distance x as a dimension. I'm using reference to coordinate system 999, and here I'm building up pressure as a function of where I travel in the x direction. Let me go back to my coordinate system, and you'll see that I gave it a numerical value manually, and I chose 999, a large number that won't conflict with anything else. So the user has to be careful about that. If I go back to the APDL commands, note that I have the distance in X entered here in the zeroth column of the table array, and you have to be very careful that the units employed for distance as well as for pressure are in the system of units that will be used when you solve. So it's this system of units here, or you might go in with analysis settings and have taken control of the system of units here. The solver units, if it's active system, which is the default, will be whatever you specify up above. You could, however, insist on a manual entry for the system of units that'll be employed. So a user needs to be careful that the system of units, here I happen to be in millimeters, is the one that's assumed with these APDL numerical values. Having gone on, I've used a named selection to refer to the face that's going to be the one getting the tangential pressure. And when I put in that dummy force, I referred to that same named selection so that I get it right. 
Here we are back in the APDL commands. I select the nodes on that surface. Select elements fully defined by those nodes on the surface, and that means I'll grab surface effect elements that were placed there. For safety, I ensure that I've restricted myself to surface 154 elements. I find the smallest numbered element. I find out what the element type attribute is. I remove the loads that are on the surface effect elements. I go down and I change an element option on those surface effect elements. I have to go to prep 7 to do it. I change a key opt entry for that element type to have face loads in the element coordinate system. And because of that dummy force here, the surface effect elements will have been oriented so that their X direction is in the direction of the arrow that you see here. So I'm using some little tricks based on how the software works internally. Face loads in the element coordinate system. Now I go back to solution and I put in my own pressures. I use a 2 right here. It's going to be a pressure in the element's X direction. I refer to my table array inside percent signs. There's the table array defined up at the top. Having put my pressures in after deleting whatever pressures were placed there, I select everything. And I also choose to save all kinds of element data in the solution so that I can post-process. And that's it for the entry. There is one catch. I have to make sure that I don't have multiple loads applied to this face using surface effect elements, or else I may overdo my application of loads on surface effect elements on that face. So I do have to make sure I have only one kind of load on this face. I can go down now and solve the model. There's a deformation. I was holding it here. There's pressure on the top face that's tangential, so it's making this thing curve a little bit. There's the state of stresses. You'll see some stress concentration in these corners. And I put some APDL commands in in order to show me the surface effect elements and so on. Let me blow this view up so you can see the commands a bit better. I'll hold there for a moment. You can screen capture if you wish. Now I'll move on and let's see what we see. First, a plot of the model. Next, a plot of just the surface effect elements with their element coordinate system symbols turned on. And you can see that this white line, the X direction, is aligned as I set it up for the force up here. Like that. Next, I use an element table method to see what the tangential pressure is. And then I show the same thing with arrows. and now a plot of pressure in the x-direction shown with contours. Note that what I'll call the two ends of that table array, it ranges from 0 to 300, I have numerical values. Outside the range from 0 to 300, the end values are used. 0 0.001 if I go in the minus direction, and it'll stay at 0 0.005 if I go above 300, in this case millimeters. So the pressure to the left here of the y-axis of this local coordinate system, you can see its number, 999. The pressure here does not go down below 0 0.001. It remains at 0 0.001. And you can see it here that these arrows are the same length down in this corner. So there's a quick once-over on how to put in a tangential pressure that ramps up. You have to use APDL commands to do it. And you can review with APDL commands as well to see that you got the direction and the range of magnitudes that you were anticipating. Thank you for joining me.